Hey guys, and welcome back. Today is going to be a comprehensive video on how to initially set up your financial calculator so that you're ready to go to make proper calculations. So the first thing we're going to want to do is turn our calculator on. And you can see we're currently rounded off to two decimal places. If you make calculations like this, they're probably not going to be as accurate as you want. So a general rule of thumb, I probably recommend about six decimal places. So to change it to that, we're going to click second. And then we're going to go down and click the little decimal button down here. And you can see we're at two. So to change it to six, we're just going to hit six and then enter up at the top. And now we're ready to go with those six decimal places. The next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our calculator is set to assume that only one payment per period or per year. Most financial calculators assume monthly payments 12 per year unless you say otherwise. So to change this, we click second and then the interest rate button. And you can see we're currently at 12. So to change this to one payment per period, we enter one, click enter, and now we're set up and ready to go for that. So we're gonna clear things out. So that's the first two steps down. The third step is to make sure your calculator is in end mode. This is usually the default, but it can accidentally be changed over to beginning mode. And you also can make calculations for beginning, but more often than not, you're gonna be making them for end. So to change this, you click second, and then you click the payment button. And you can see we're currently in end mode. To change this to beginning, you click second, and then you click the enter button and it goes over to beginning. And if you wanna change it again back, you click second and enter again, and it goes back to end mode. So now we're all set up and ready to go. Now some common mistakes that people make, especially when they're first starting out and entering in calculations is they forget to clear out their calculator before making a new calculation. So this should just be something that you learn to do before making any new calculation is you should click second and then click the future value button, which is going to clear out the time value of money. And that's gonna reset things so that you're ready to go for a new problem. Another common mistake that people make is they don't either enter negative values for outflows or positive for inflows. And where this is most prevalent is gonna be on the present value. So your present value is going to be your outflow of cash. So that's gonna be a negative number that you're generally putting in there. Or if you're calculating the present value and you get a negative result, this is to be expected and don't worry about it when you see that. And another common mistake that we typically see is financial calculators assume that rates are quoted in percentages. So let's just say you have 8% and you wanna type that into your interest rate button. You're not gonna type in 0.08 and then click the interest rate button to enter it in. What you're gonna to want to do is since your calculator is assuming that it's quoted as a percentage, you're gonna type that 8% as just eight and then click the interest rate button and now it's set in as 8%. So that's another common mistake that we typically run into, especially when we're first learning how to use our financial calculator. So that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. We went through six things on how to set up your calculator and some common mistakes that people made. Hope it was helpful. You can check out all of our videos over at our YouTube channel. Subscribe for more, and we hope to see you in those future videos. Bye.